one of the hardest things that didn't make it into the show was us following some of the Nazis in the Middle East and North Africa. Um, what are they doing in North Africa? Yeah, uh, well, they were aligning with radical Muslim groups. And uh, what do the Nazis and the Muslims have in common? They, they want to kill, kill Jews. Jews. That's right. Everybody's pumped about this. We got a Patreon community. They're the reason I'm here. They're the reason you're here and that I'm able to do this. And so I give them an opportunity to ask questions. Okay. And so this one is from Stephen Casey. In reference to the Hunting Hitler TV series that you did on the History Channel, are there any things that didn't make it into the episodes that are worth knowing? What got cut, if anything, from the series that would help us understand better? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. It's a hard question. Um, about half of what we investigated ended up on the edit room floor. So I'd say we overshot 200% of the investigation that never went into, yes, it was real truthful storytelling, um, but they're also fo following like this narrative that of a story that they wanted to tell. And the arc of that story was, did Hitler get out? Um, the things that I cared about were are around the idea of how did these Nazis get out? And more importantly, how did their ideas get ground and, um, you know, have legs into history moving forward. One of the one of the hardest things that didn't make it into the show was us following some of the Nazis in the Middle East and North Africa. Um, what are they, they doing to, in North Africa? Yeah, uh, well, they were aligning with radical Muslim groups. And uh, what do the Nazis and the Muslims have in common? They, they want to kill, kill Jews. Jews. That's right. The Grand Mufti was organizing every single neighboring country to attack. The Grand Mufti was being advised by Nazis. Um, and every one of those Muslim-based countries, the Grand Mufti, who was like the religious leader at the time over all of them, he was orchestrating and, and organizing strategically the connective advisors, which were Nazis that had been smuggled out of Germany and into North Africa, uh, and, and like anywhere that they could go, that they were welcomed. So like in Argentina, for example, a gigantic Nazi population, huge German settlements that were there. I mean, even Do, in you Texas, still see that down there? Oh, yeah. The landowners down in Argentina, like we'd go to these r rural remote areas and you'd walk into a, a coffee shop, you know, like Buenos Dias, and they're like, Guten Morgen. I'm like, all right. I mean, you're in the middle Whoa. of nowhere, and there's this blonde six-year-old dude with blue eyes, and he's correcting you speaking Spanish in Argentina because he wants to speak German in his coffee shop. And um, it's rooted in there. I go to this fight club as I was trying to find out who owned some of these pieces of property that we're getting on. There were dudes with SS tattoos on their necks, swastikas on their arms, palm leaves on their sides, you know, and um, all the way back to the What does the palm leaf mean? The, uh, the the German campaign of North Africa. Okay. The, uh, you know, it's it's like a palm tree with a swastika at the base of it. Shit, I've not seen that. Yeah. Wow. And I, I literally like see, and these are grandsons of, you know, men that escaped war, criminal hearings to settle in Argentina, Brazil, Uruguay, Paraguay, North Africa, and the Middle East. Wow. Yeah. They got out. That's That didn't make it into the show. Go figure. Um, one more question. This is actually from another patron, but I'm personally interested in this too. Uh, her name's Amy Weaver. She wants to know, did we get Hitler or did he escape? Well, he died for sure. Um, now, did he die in April in 1945 in the bunker? Uh, or did he live a few more years? We, we know his health was deteriorating rapidly um, at the end of the war. Regardless of if he got out, we know his ideas got out. And the, the way that we did this investigation was we looked 
as we're looking at patterns of life, you know, as, as, as you know, like as, as you hunt people, you first, every person has a fingerprint. And um, no matter where they go in the world, that figu- fingerprint is how they live. Like if you want to find me, you're going to find me in jujitsu gyms. You're going to find me in good coffee shops. You're going to find me in cold water. You're going to find me um, at shooting ranges. Like the, no matter where I go, I, I end up having this very similar pattern where I stay, the floor that I stay in, the room that I stay in. So as we figured out the pattern of life of these Nazis, um, we looked – you know, two through 10 escaped, you know, the Joseph Mengele's, the Skorzenskis, the Adolf Eichmann's, those guys got out. So if number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, if all Martin Borman, if all these guys got out, but Hitler then didn't and was left there to die, what was he such a fanatic radical that he wanted to go down with the sinking ship? Um, or, we know for a fact that the all of the things they rehearsed and all of the escape routes that they had practiced were ultimately used by high-ranking Nazis. Could it have been Hitler? Absolutely. Um, did we find the smoking gun of here is his body, here is his skull, here is the DNA proof? No, we did not. Interesting. Yeah. Frustrating. Interesting. Yeah. It's, uh, man, that had to be a fascinating project to be on. It was a ton of fun. Getting okay. a call when you're in a a weird moment in your life, be like, oh, you can fly drones. You know how to use ground penetrating radar. You can speak Spanish. You got deployments in South America. Do you want to hunt Nazis? And I was like, <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. First, I'm going to hide this erection. Second, book me a flight. Tell me where to go. I cannot wait. You know, like we, I've been hi- hunting people my whole entire adult life, and now you're going to tell me to hunt Nazis? The only thing better would be like zombies. Like This, this is like a, a, a moral free, um, no guilt opportunity to hunt people. I'm in. Hey, everybody. I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.